you today. Clearly you don't get a joke. Obviously I know exactly what you're doing here today because you, if you forgot, booked to see me today and when you booked you told me all about what you wanted to see me for and you indeed want my services to help you. Do not get jokes or something. Okay, well, welcome here to my financial department. Here I am able to help people such as yourself who tend to have a bad habit of overspending with things, not knowing what to do with your money. So, you said you were interested in making sure that you have money going where it needs to be and put aside and things like that just a bit more managing and a bit more of financial advice there for you I specialize in those services well you could normally find me in my office in a much nicer rural area than this here in the city though occasionally I do have my office here and it's to help uh, lost causes like yourself Okay, let's get that started up here. Here we're gonna place that there. Okay, perfect. Right, and this calls for some notepads, depending on how many we're gonna need. So probably not that one. Probably not that one there. Possibly that one. of a financial advisor so let me make it crystal clear for someone as let's say openly minded as you and when I say openly minded I mean of course someone who doesn't look like they're present in the conversation uh, someone who looks like they'd rather be thinking about other things and not other places that my 
dear friend is what we would consider exceptionally rude behavior and we don't condone that sort of thing here okay so if you're not going to give me your full divided attention then i'm afraid that my calculations could be all off and i could indeed not help you at all and you could be spending even more so hmm, what's it going to be there for you perfect okay just you and me and we'll get through this together okay sounding good excellent well i knew you were present in there somewhere okay it is a good view i don't blame you right so i have your details here and when i asked you to book i asked you to just make a little list of all the things the big major things which you think you've spent your money on within the last several months and if there's anything big which stands out those are the things which i want to know about because i can help you manage those areas of uh, spending which you seem to be it's not a struggle it's just diverting your you're spending to something else, something which you're going to get a lot more value from, something that you're going to feel, something that will give you a sense of accomplishment and achievement. So that's why I wanted you to make that little list. So we're going to go through that little list. I said, tell me everything. Don't hide anything back from me there and all those expensive things that you've been buying there. Yeah, I know from the list here, you've been going to some rather prestigious places purchasing things okay so before we begin i just had a look at these uh, places that you've been going to so you've gone to one of them for example is you went to a suit store not so long ago and where normal people would buy a suit or something like that you opted for a bespoke suit see well here lies the uh, the problem that you might be experiencing at the moment is because how do I put it lightly for you bespoke suits are quite expensive and for someone like you who looks like well you wouldn't wear a bespoke suit one might think that that's probably not going to be a great purchase for you Whereas if you had that money that you didn't spend on the bespoke suit, then you can do something that will give you a sense of accomplishment, achievement, and something which will give you gratification in knowing that you have not spent that money on something that you don't really need. So going by your dress, I was actually most surprised. And no doubt that is why you've come to see me. You too come from that area as well. I was most surprised because I haven't heard your name circulating around there before. No one's mentioned you ever. Unless you're one of those people that are undesirable. And of course, we mention those undesirables quite a lot because we don't want them in that area whatsoever. Yeah, that's probably the case. So it's great that you're from that area. But then again, from your standpoint, it's not financially beneficial for you to go buying a bespoke suit every, I don't know how many months, okay? That's probably what the problem is gonna be. So we're gonna just calculate and make some figures here. These figures are going to help give us both an insight on what are those big things that you're spending and if we can just slightly adjust them according to your current lifestyle. So it doesn't, actually change anything what you're doing it's just it's cherry picking the things that you want the things that you consider you might need and then me as a financial advisor just advise you then perhaps you shouldn't go for that one there okay when we put the figures together i'm sure you're going to be pleasantly surprised and of course that is my job here as a financial advisor is to help you and advise you so of course if you'd like to proceed please do let me know and we can continue i will say anything financial sometimes can be considered a little bit more on the relaxing side shall we say 
which means you might find yourself drifting off or dozing, something like that. But because I'm an exceptionally busy financial advisor, that means I'm just going to continue regardless, okay? So you get what you pay for with me, okay? Time is precious. Oh, don't worry, we've already started, yeah. Okay, so don't worry, I'll add that to the, the ridiculous expenses which uh, you have here as well. Not a problem. Okay, so let's get fresh pieces of paper here. So, who's that later on? Let's see, we'll just get a nice start off with some paper here. We make some calculations. Okay, get a pen out here and we can take a look and just take off the things which might be making your expenditure just a little bit higher than you want to. Also, I do with investments and things like that. So anything which, of course, if you have money which you think you'd rather invest it in something, then we can discuss that further as well. But the very fundamental basic thing first is to go through some of these expenses. So whilst we're on the subject here, we will discuss this. Uh, bespoke suit that you felt the need to purchase. Okay, so we'll just write that down there. Bespoke suit. Okay, and there's a load of items here which uh, you had to incur the cost of to get this bespoke suit. Uh, the summary, well, we'll we have the grand total there very shortly, but what we've got here. Okay, so to get a bespoke suit, it you go through numerous fittings and then you eventually have your final fitting. So the very first fitting you had, that was 2,000, okay, 2,800 pounds there for your initial measure up. Okay, and then you went back again, so that was selecting some of your materials, which was 1,400 pounds there. Okay, and then you went back for yet another fitting that was 800 pounds, okay. And then you also went back again to try on the first draft of your suit. Okay, so that was three thousand pounds. See what I mean? It begins to tally up. And then finally you went for your final fitting and then to purchase the suit once it had been made. And that was <laughs> a quite a large figure this one for a suit at ten thousand pounds. So you see what I mean, for your frivolous bespoke suit which you decided that you needed, you've tallied up uh, some figures there, haven't you? Okay, so what we have here, we're just going to do the calculations here, so 2,800 plus 1,400 plus 800 plus 3,000 plus 10,000 equals for your bespoke suit, which of course I'm sure looks absolutely superb and the quality, I can imagine, you know, what you got from that place. I have get my suits from there as well and you get what you paid for. You paid for this particular suit, 18,000 pounds, okay. So we'll just write that in there. Okay, 18,000 pounds and that was one of the one of the big expenses that you you paid for there. So the first one is item there is clothing. Okay, and apparently that suit was necessary. Okay. So this is where my financial advising comes in to play for you here. As we go through your finances here, we'd like to just discuss a little bit. If you think that you need it, that item of great expense. So with that bespoke suit, how many times have you purchased it? How many times, sorry, have you worn it? I see. 
And why is that? Indeed, you have no events to go to. And someone like you probably just wouldn't wear a suit, would you? No. So two reasons. You haven't got any events, and you don't in fact like wearing any suits. So, as your financial advisor, let me advise you on something here. You don't like suits. You don't go to any events which you need to wear a suit. Isn't it obvious for you? I would probably think that in an area like that, you thought it would be a good idea to to get a suit. Okay, maybe you saw Lord Farquaad go past his carriage or something like that. I don't know what, but you really did not need to get that suit. That could have been £18,000 invested into something good. So let me help you out there. This particular suit... Not needed at all. This seems to be quite a recurring uh, thing which is happening here. You appear to have a little bit of a love for going to that game store, don't you? And I notice your purchases are quite irregular here. They seem to be quite late at night. And this is quite a common trait that all of your large-scale purchases have been at the earliest in the evening, 8 o'clock in the evening onwards, and the game store nearing midnight as well. We'll get on to that very shortly. So this game store, we made some purchases late at night, didn't we? I don't know what was going on there. Would you profess yourself to be a bit of a gamer? Well, we'll see about that. Okay, so it was a game store. Okay. And you were quite frivolous there as well, weren't you? So, let's write down this. So, a new PS5 console. You decided you wanted to spend £900 on a PS4, PS5 console, okay? When they don't cost £900 at all. The price for it at the moment is about 525 40 max. And around about that time, it was about 420 So, I don't know what happened there. We'll get onto that shortly. I know the cause. Okay. Then you decided you wanted to buy some retro games as well. Okay. That sent you back two grand for retro games. Okay. Retro. Right. Two thousand pounds. That's what you decided you wanted to spend two thousand pounds on some retro games, and not that many either here as well. Okay. So you got your console and you got your games. Right. And then what you decided to do whilst you was at that game store was subscribe to their membership there with an annual fee of five hundred pounds. Please do enlighten me what what would you get from from that membership? Just as I thought, exclusive hours, which you get to go in the game store. Everybody has exclusive hours, and you spend £500 on that. Yeah, I'm beginning to see a little bit of a reoccurring trade here with you. Right, okay, so you got your console, you got your retro games. £2,000, you've got your membership there as well. Then you decided you wanted to buy some new games for your new console, okay? And you managed to spend £400 on a couple of games, okay? £400. I mean, was it a Dulux edition or something like that? Uh, no, it wasn't. Just a couple of games. Well, okay. And those games... Uh, just go through there, you got your games, and then you decided you wanted to buy some 
shirts in there as well. No doubt to probably look a little bit like a gamer. Yeah, but I can advise you with that already. You're one of those people who sort of have that look where they're neither that or or that. So I don't want to come across rude or anything like that or insensitive, but you don't look like you you really fit into a certain category there. I could see what you're doing. That every place that you go to, you just go 110% in that place to make it seem like you are, of course, a professional in that. Unless you are, of course, and you're stinking rich and loaded, then I'm not sure why you've come to see me at all. But what I'm seeing here at the moment is this high expenditure for not too many reasons okay so your merchandise there so a couple of shirts yeah 750 pounds that's what you decided to spend in that game shop and that was just in one visit to that game shop and you have reoccurring visits here along with the suit store as well this is just within the last several months okay so we're going to make this calculation here for you if you hadn't done it already so we had 900 pounds okay 900 pounds okay plus 2000 pounds plus 500 pounds plus 400 pounds plus 750 pounds to a grand total of your gaming expense there of four thousand five hundred and fifty pounds in one night now some might consider that to be just a little bit ludicrous visiting a game sp game store and spending uh, that amount of money there i am beginning to think that you are in fact stinking rich but i mean just your look it's more of a you could afford me type look which you have there unless you have afford me of course well well, then you might have afforded me, actually, because my rates are exceptionally expensive. Hmm. We'll get back into that as well. Yeah, but what I was saying we'll get into is this theme which we have here for this expenditure. Okay. You went in late. Okay. Made a lot of expensive purchases. 11 o'clock at the very earliest of your first expense. Now... I assume you went back for late night gaming with the late night store opening times so, here. No, I know about all these things because I too am from that area. I'm familiar with every single place there. Now, I want to support every single shop owner in that area and all the work that they do is absolutely superb and sublime, you know, and it really is quite magnificent that they are able to so, so much to someone as special as you. Yeah, I mean, it brings great joy to my heart. But, of course, I too have to be great and professional and amazing. So, as a financial advisor, I have to make sure that I give you the very best. So, my advice here for you is that you're spending too much bloody money. Why are you doing this? Do you play games when you're at home? No, you don't. Have you played your console since you've purchased it? A few times. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, a, f a few times. Tick. Okay, and your retro games, have you played any of those? Nope. And uh, no doubt you haven't got the correct console for it. Yeah, of course. Okay, so yeah, that's kind of irrelevant there as well. Yeah, okay, so wrong console. Your membership for exclusive uh, hours for the shop. Okay, that's very exclusive. Have you been to the shop since? Nope. And those new PS5 console games that you decided you wanted to purchase. How are those games? Tell me. Okay, and your merchandise. Have you worn any of it yet? No. And, I mean, obviously not. By what you're wearing at the moment, you, yeah. Okay. So, you've purchased a console, which you've used a couple of times, but everything else, like the bespoke suit, 
you have not used whatsoever. Yet someone might consider that to be uh, not financially viable if you wanted to do other things with uh, your money there. So this is uh, what I've noticed with these purchases of yours to help eliminate this sort of mindless spending which you are taking part in at the moment just unnecessary games unnecessary memberships i mean to me your middle name must be god or something like that i don't know but the recurring trend which i've got here is that you are going to these places exceptionally late at night you're obviously more susceptible to certain things that is why these stores are open so late because it attracts people like you okay all the or the majority of the upper class elites who live in that area myself included uh, they're out socializing you know doing things of importance and they know that people maybe like yourself and you know low class riffraff and things like that they know they might be out at that time and that's what the shop owners and the business owners around there know as well and they stay open to welcome you with open arms and no doubt be exceptionally friendly to you and you get caught up in all of that and you no doubt have an exceptionally great time because that is what is designed for for you when you walk in and then you start spending all your money and then of course you get caught in this late night sleepy spending spree which of course isn't good so i'm going to redeem this particular one for you and are you enjoying yourself so far Perfect. That's really great to great to see. Okay, I don't know why you're seeing the financial advisor. I notice you're getting a little bit sleepy there as well, and even though it's not late at night at the moment, uh, if you do fall asleep, just to let you know that I will continue with your financial advising here. Yeah, okay, and making your calculations and just helping you see a little bit of sense in what you've been getting. Okay, perfect. Okay, well, I think this one is going to interest you very greatly. Now, this is, of course, quite impressive what you do here. Ability to do this. Your other expense, do you remember what it, what it is? Right. No, it's, it's not that one. No, no, it's not all the books that you've been purchasing. The thousands upon thousands of books pounds you're spending on books no that's another thing no one of the things which really stood out for me okay probably what got you here as well how did you travel here today indeed and of course i assume you didn't go by cruise ship did you no you took the plane of course and no doubt you travelled in a particular manner whilst you was on that plane. Yeah, well let's just say, give you a clue, it wasn't economy, was it? No, you appear to have a flair for travelling in first class everything. First class, business class, the most highest classes that you can get in all of these travelling places, you always travel like that. One of the things that you have here is one of your train journeys okay this isn't just a normal train it's a sleeper train that you decided you wanted to go on there's not even enough hours in that journey for you to have a decent sleep yet you decided you want to go by sleeper train right so this is going to be your first class travel now one of the things which i you know, or give you the benefit of the doubt for, is that live in a place with Lord Farquhar and, you know, all those lords and ladies, everything like that. Then you hear a lot of chatter, you get a lot of recommendations of various things, transportation, people going here, there and everywhere. Of course, you can get caught up in all of those things, okay? And you want to travel in luxury. 
Well, this is where I think you're actually super rich, or what I'd like to say, stinking rich. And uh, that's why you do this. Though the fact that you've come to see me makes me think more so that you're probably doing a little, a little bit too much going on these first class trips everywhere. Okay, this is one of the things which I've picked up on for you and just to help you adjust that a little bit so you can get that sense of accomplishment with your money as opposed to just wasting it all on one of these trips of yours which you don't probably go to anywhere we'll get onto that very shortly yeah and spend a lot of money going on it okay so this was a uh, train travel right okay so travel okay right so one of the first things was your ticket for this travel experience so of course it was a sleeper train sleeper trains are quite expensive okay eighteen thousand pounds Okay, and then you bumped that up to make sure that you was in first class and had your own suite by another ten thousand pounds. Okay, so we have twenty eight thousand pounds there. Okay, just for your initial ticket there. Okay, so you see what I mean. This first class of business already, you're off to a flying start with twenty eight. Okay, that's quite a lot. One would consider that quite a lot, just for traveling somewhere that's not too far away from you as well. Okay. And it's at night, so really, it should be cheaper as well. Just take that in consideration. Right. So here's one of the things that you decided you wanted here. One of these, you went for a suit fitting on a train. Okay, you went on the most expensive train, and you decided you wanted to have a suit fitting there as well. And it was a bespoke suit again. It's almost as if you can't help yourself. And you decided that you must get that new suit at all costs. And it must be on a sleeper train to make sure that you feel as luxurious as possible here. Yeah. Okay, so that whole experience was £38,000 that you got there for your suit. Tailored made at short notice. £38,000. Okay, just put that one in there for you okay thirty eight thousand pounds good right so that was just for your suit and then you decided that you wanted to go to the bar there as well no doubt you had a great time on on the on the bar there on the train yeah yeah so yeah plenty of nice drinks i imagine a nice bartender there getting you all the drinks that you needed late at night and you managed to sink at that bar three thousand Eight hundred and twenty-five pounds at a bar at night. Okay, on the buffet car. Okay, that's what you decided to do that evening. So you got your suit fit, and then you went to a bar as well. And this isn't the first time you've been there as well. You actually went back and you did this whole experience all over again. So yeah, you can see how it tallies up, can't you? Okay, and then when you were on your train, you decided you wanted a luxurious meal on there as well. And this was one of the very personal experiences, okay? So this was uh, literally you being served by one of the waiters on that train. How much did that cost you, do you remember? It was quite late, so of course you might have been a bit more frivolous at that time. Yep, uh, no, a little bit higher. Little bit higher, 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 little bit lower. Eleven thousand two hundred and eighty pounds. And you thought, you know, you'd splash out on lobster. Okay, have the finest drinks again, even though you'd probably just been to the bar. Okay, on the coach, one of the coaches on the train. And I looked into this a little bit there for you because I'm familiar with this travel experience, which starts at, you know, where we live. It was, of course, a very traditional experience for you. It was pulled by a steam train. Okay, that is the most, of course, most luxurious way to travel. Okay, but it's not only that, you decided that you wanted to go and have a driving experience on the steam train as well. So you made your way up the coach through the tender and then on 
to the steam train footplate as well. Well, you thought, wow, what an absolute experience, but no, upon, upon closer inspection here, um, you paid for that as well, okay? And that was £6,000 just to stand there for probably two seconds, okay? So £6,000 for your train ride experience. Excellent. Well, let's get that tallied up there for you. So, £18,000 plus £10,000. Plus thirty-eight thousand pounds. Plus three thousand eight hundred and twenty-five pounds. Plus eleven thousand two hundred and eighty. Plus six thousand pounds equals. So, first-class travel experience, of course, is absolutely amazing, and doing it late night is just literally sublime and the best. However, you've done it plenty of times over and over again and you keep doing it so that particular trip of yours ended up being wait for it it's it's a really lovely amount there for you eighty seven thousand one hundred and five pounds just for your sleeper train experience destination literally nowhere to get a suit made and then to come back and just to relax so is, is this just leisure for you okay do you have any hobbies or something i'd like to travel on, on first class right now i mean well, i suppose it could be well, yeah but as your financial advisor here that eighty-seven thousand pounds okay could be spent on something a little bit more satisfying and long term there for you and used to do something good for example i don't know planting a load of trees or something i don't know buying more land in there i don't know things like that when you can invest it in in something good however this is uh, not what one would consider to be fine spending okay and one of the things which i noticed here you know, it's not just steam train rides you have it here Okay, so we have. Can you see the screen there? Yeah, it's probably best you don't actually. So you have train rides, traditional train rides. These are late night ones, of course. And it doesn't stop at there. You also have first class luxury plane experiences. Okay, you have first class luxury sleeping train, uh, sleeping plane experiences. You have sleep cabins on your plane there as well, okay. And then it's not just trains and planes, you also are a seafarer as well, You're very impressive. But of course, you keep going on these cruises as well, and you keep the same tradition going here too, which is nice to see. There is some consistency in your traveling, which of course, consistency is very good. Uh, but you keep that same trend of of traveling in first class private cabins, going out for expensive meals, getting your own personal experiences on there, literally splashing out as much as humanly possible that you can get on all of these traveling things, endeavors, adventures, whatever you'd like to call it, I'd probably call it not a very great uh, use of your time and money and living in an area which you live in then perhaps it probably would be spent, uh, should be spent on something a little bit wiser, like, I don't know, I mean, your attire, it, it's in, sort of in between, it's not bad, but it's not great, okay, so something which would be a bit more useful for you, you wouldn't really want to be going around in a suit, because I think you, and probably everyone else would know in that area, that you just don't particularly suit a suit, no offense, of course. No. Okay, but you could spend your money in something a little bit more wiser, like perhaps get in an even bigger mansion in that area, or something like that, you know, or put an even bigger gate and walls around your house, or, you know, something very, very useful, rather than going on all these things across countries and, and spending and wasting all of your money. It makes no sense. It really doesn't. So what I'm going to do there is... 
get this here for you and we're just going to make it and that's that there for you as well right yeah i don't really think that we should i mean i think you're getting a little bit sleepy as well that we should go through much more if i just go through the main things which you that you had here so you've got the libraries which you go to get all these expensive books you go into all these bars okay all these clubs and um, these clubs are not necessarily drinking clubs or anything like that uh, you also go into cigar shops okay you've got other bespoke things there for you as well you've got suit shops tie shops shirts shops there as well okay you go to your sleep uh, clinics there those are incredibly expensive but you keep going to them for some reason okay you know the list goes on and on and on more games more consoles um, and these are very very expensive things which you keep buying as you're in those places so yeah i see what you mean so is there a particular reason is there something that you're aiming for as you're as you're going to all these places in particular it could, it could be anything okay <laughs> so I'm, I'm just going to clarify that a little bit just allow it to simmer in my brain and make sense so you go to all of these places because they help you relax and fall asleep is there a particular reason why you like this sort of uh, excessive expenditure why you keep going to all these places uh, which of course you know i go to all myself i i go for and do exactly the same thing as you if not even more though I do invest it in, in some very important things like the high wars, you know, and the, the big gates and, and buy more land and things like that. And of course, making transportation as, as, you know, as close to Lord Farquhar as possible. Yeah. But, okay, I am dressed in a suit and no doubt I look the part. Unfortunately, uh, you don't really look like the part and because the recurring thing which I'm seeing here Okay, these things which are going on They tend to always begin on average 10 o'clock in the evening even when you go to travel you start your traveling at about 10 11 o'clock at night so you're going for late dinners and then you have the whole evening and night and things like that and you're literally you know, you must be sleepwalking or something like that. I don't quite understand, really. Okay, so my advice for you here, okay, as a financial advisor, would be, okay, already? Yeah, perhaps uh, just cut down a little bit on, on all those luxurious things you're going on. By all means, do all the things which you're doing still, but just don't when you get there decide that you should buy absolutely everything and just you know try to be one of those people that you you really don't come across as okay as you know sort of upper classy and good taste and things like that um, though the other part of me would say that you should definitely do all those things because they're 100% worthwhile and you should totally enjoy yourself and just get caught up in all of that because it's very important that you fit into an area like that and of course that you support all of your local areas and, and places that you like to go to and of course they're expressing themselves and offering you all these amazing things for you to spend so one would say of course that these are really good things which you're doing and spending all your your money on you know some people could see it as a complete waste of money but i would be inclined to say that you're spending your money exceptionally wisely and going through all of these things here and knowing all the shop owners in you know back at home and everything like that and knowing what a great place we live in i mean it, well it just tells me that um, for someone like you you know just completely immerse yourself in all of it 
you know, spend as much as you want because clearly you are stinking rich and you're just being hiding it from everybody. As a financial advisor, I could see very closely uh, people and you certainly look like you yeah, clearly have all of that to spend. And I do believe that when you came to see me is that you are in fact trying to find a reason to go on one of your first class travel experiences is that right yeah i noticed a little smile there <laughs> well of course this will all add up and just you know your time here is going to be very expensive as well and even though it's you know still light outside but it is a little bit late, it is six o'clock in the evening. And of course, you know, evening times for you, are very clearly enjoyable times. And no doubt you needed a little bit of time since when you woke up in a ride probably here this morning to just, you know, well, you, this afternoon needed to do something, didn't you? And of course you recommended recommended me by someone back in our area okay was it Lord Farquhar or something like that of course not he wouldn't speak to someone like you uh, yeah and you thought well that'd be a good idea tell everyone about it back at home and of course get some financial advice yeah or just have something to do in the evening relax you know get yourself prepared because no doubt you are of course flying back tonight first class private cabin REG Airlines yeah, there we go. Perfect. Well, I do believe, I think we have understood one another here, and you have indeed very cleverly managed to utilize your time and utilize my time. Well, for me, it was a great success because you have just spent even more money coming to see me, and we had a little discuss your finances, which, of course, is what you wanted. Uh, but at the same time, uh, you wanted something to relax to and uh, and and to do uh, whilst you're going all your travel experiences. Yeah, so uh, yeah, you're going to be going back in first class. Perfect. Well, I must say we can conclude our uh, very important financial advising uh, meeting that we have here today, uh, and I would recommend that maybe you go and see me in my home office okay back in yep that's it and it's quite close by uh, all those bespoke suit stores there as well and you can really talk about investing your money into something very very expensive and worthwhile and i'm sure that i'll be able to get something very very good for you you know and that will certainly get heads turning in that area that's for sure well of course, I do specialize in all those things in that area. Uh, forgive me, I too actually have a flight to catch tonight as well. And I too will be traveling in REG Airlines. And I too will be having a luxury cabin experience there as well. Okay, excellent. So it looks like we both have very very important things to be doing this evening so is there anything else i can help you with here advise you on anything no well you look a little bit sleepy there so so how about we just uh, conclude our little meeting there okay yeah, that's really good it was really nice to meet you and make your acquaintance there and i do wish you all the best with your uh, lifestyle which you have well, it appears to me that uh, you are exceptionally happy with uh, everything at the moment which is of course absolutely great to see and uh, I hope to see you uh, back uh, when we get home of course please don't uh, talk to me look at me it's mark with me or anything like that even acknowledge me uh, if you see me at the airport on the plane in the cabin anything like that because I of course wouldn't want to be associated with uh, the likes of you but apart from that it was really great to meet you and uh, yeah, it well, hopefully that you just got some insight into some things that you've been uh, spending your, your good money on. Okay, well, it's of course getting late, and uh, yeah, so take care of yourself. Cheerio.